Welcome, one and all, to this week's edition of Storylines. I'm Lynn Palermo, your writing and accountability coach. So for most of us, we took up the mantle of researching our family history many, many years ago. We likely didn't think then that we would be here learning to turn that research into entertaining stories. But here we are, and it can be scary. Writing, putting your words down on the page can put you in a state of vulnerability. Regardless of whether you are blogging your family history or writing a book for the general public or just sharing your stories with family, we are opening ourselves up to others to critique our writing and therefore us. One thing we have to remember is this fear and insecurity fuels our procrastination. It's not an easy task to put yourself out there in such an honest manner. After all, we're all human. Our feelings get hurt. You might be questioning yourself. That wouldn't be unusual. All writers do. It's normal. Who am I to write these things? I'm not a writer. Why should anyone read my writing? Will they question what I've written? Disagree with it? All very real questions. Will anyone read my stories? Does anyone care? All of these questions snowball into an all-encompassing mindset of self-doubt, telling yourself, I'm not a good writer, or I'm not a writer at all. In fact, I'm a bad writer. How do we overcome these feelings of self-doubt? How do we write with more confidence? Well, first we practice a lot. That's code for write. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. In order to master your craft, you need to immerse yourself in every day, every chance you get. Nobody comes a confident writer overnight. It takes practice, perseverance, patience, and time. Write about what you know in order to be a good writer. Write about um, your ancestors, write, um, know your material, write from sound research, and you'll feel confident about writing those stories. Do your research. The more facts we have in front of us about our ancestors, the more confident we are going to be in our writing. So get those facts, be able to support your arguments, cite your sources, and then learn from others. Have you come across a writer who you feel expresses your tone and style well? Read their stuff, learn from them, let them mentor you, figure out what they are doing right so that you can apply that knowledge to your own work. Enjoy what you are writing about. You should be excited about the topic you are writing. Like I have said a couple episodes ago in Storylines, passion and purpose fuels our writing. That excitement will carry over in your tone and make your writing sound better overall. Next, don't compare yourself to others. Your voice is your own. Your thoughts are your own. Your experiences are your own. You bring all of those things to the page in your writing and you can become a better writer, but you shouldn't try to become a different person. Okay, embrace your authentic voice and stop comparing yourself to other writers. Proofread. Now we are all susceptible to making errors. Double checking your work is an extra step needed in making sure that your writing is void of common mistakes that you might be worried about. Spelling, grammar, punctuation. So edit your work, take out the unnecessary parts, the fluff, the run on sentences, Make sure your story is cohesive and solid. But remember, the first draft is never the final draft. So for those of you who are joining us on February 1st for the Family History Writing Challenge, keep these tips top of mind. Don't let self-doubt stop you from being successful. If you haven't signed up yet for the challenge and you think that might be something that interests you, you can jump on board still and just sign up below this video. 
I'll send you an email with several steps on how to get ready for the challenge. I hope you'll join us. And in the meantime, Storylines will be on a short hiatus during the challenge. But we will return on March 4th. And so I will see you then. And for those of you in the challenge, I'll see you on Saturday.